Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Um, at BIM this year, you would have heard about a lot of local AI development capabilities that were announced for Windows. Windows AI Foundry was introduced, uh, which leverages underlying capabilities like Windows ML, and that in turn empowers you to utilize the power of the CPU, NPU, GPU, and meet processing power uh, requirements for your heavy workloads. We work across our silicon OEM partners to make sure that Windows provides the best in class experience for your Windows developer uh, scenarios for AI, be it fine tuning, training, inferencing, etc. Um, local AI development becomes important in today's age as developers look for solutions where you have both uh, privacy and security needs, like there's data that you want to keep on your device that you may not want to share or upload onto cloud because of privacy concerns. Um, you have cost reduction requirements. Running things on cloud at, at the go can be cost uh, incurring. So you want to do your early prototypes, your debugging, your local development first, before you think before things mature and you take it to the cloud. And so for developer productivity, efficiency, all of these things, local AI development becomes a crucial tool. And with the Windows AI stack capabilities that we have today, what makes it even more powerful is the AI workstations that our OEM partners have introduced. Today, uh, I, Paridita Rahi, uh, who's a product manager on Microsoft, and Paulo, will show you some scenarios uh, that can showcase how you can make your AI development much, much easier, faster, utilizing these latest hardware that we have uh, in front of you. So let's start with one scenario, and Paulo, maybe you'd like to introduce yourself first. Sure thing. Uh, my name is Paulo Mendonça. I'm a principal scientist with the Applied Sciences Group at Microsoft. Um, and what I'm going to live demo for you today is the fine tuning of a real model on a real data set happening uh, locally here on this device uh, during, during this live demo. Uh, so let me start by kicking in the right command here. There you go. And all right. So it takes a little bit of time for the model to, to load. And meanwhile, I'm going to explain the screens that you hopefully see in front of you uh, right now. So uh, let me switch here to performance. And right now, uh, this is going to be trained on the GPU. Nothing is happening. The model hasn't loaded up yet. Uh, but here, we have a couple of samples. Those aren't real yet. As soon as the training starts, they will become real. Uh, but they show two performance metrics that interest me here. One is throughput. How many samples per second can I feed through this model? Not for inference, but for fine tuning. So back propagation is happening, gradients are being computed, and all of that. And that's the window that you see here where my mouse is uh, moving around. On the other side, the other metric that I care about is that is the training working? You know, is the error going down? Is my loss function decreasing? And that's going to show up here in this screen. Uh, the error messages that you see here, they were scary to me at first when I tried the demo without internet. It's just saying that, no, I, I, don't, have, I don't have internet. I can't load the data. I'm going to use the data that has been cached before. So all of that is good. And as you can see, um, the GPU has kicked in. Um, all of its 96 gigabytes of RAM are um, working. Not of it, actually, just, just about half of it. Uh, but, but training is going on. Uh, and as you can see here, I have some, uh, well, actually, let me take a step back. I throw a lot of jargon at you, talked about backpropagation gradients. So let me explain more detail what's going on. Um, I'm training a real LLM, the 5.4 Mini. It has three and a half billion parameters. And I'm using a real fine tuning algorithm, LoRa, to actually add parameters to it that are adjusted for a specific task. So fine tuning is a form of training. And for training, you need data. For this example that you see there, uh, I'm using this Alpaca data set, uh, the clean version. So it has about 52,000 um, samples of data. Each sample is sort of half a page of text. And it's, uh, it consists of how to, step-by-step uh, -step how to instructions for, for different um, activities. Um, if you put all of this together, these 52 samples and the size of each sample, you have about um, 
100 paperbacks. That's the volume of this uh, data set. So a pretty decent bookshelf. Uh, that's, uh, that's what's happening here. And um, training is going on. Uh, and I have a metric here. It's going to take 37 minutes for the first epoch. I don't have this amount of time. So I'm going to switch quickly here to a video, uh, which I will kick in sort of maybe not quite halfway, but um, it, this video parallels the same training that I'm doing here live for you in this other window. Uh, but it shows um, that you reach conclusion. Oh, of course, it's uh, sped up and I'm being transparent here 150x time. But at the end of this, um, it will save the model and, and I'll have a, a fine-tuned model to, to play with. Um, this is possible because of the specs of this, um, of this GPU. So um, I mentioned the 96 gigabytes, but there is also 1.8 terabytes of, um, um, per second of memory bandwidth. So all the specs have to play a role here for, for this to work the way uh, the way it does. But that's only the GPU. Um, it also has a very powerful Intel uh, Core Ultra CPU, 20 cores, four by five grid that you can see here. And right now it's doing nothing. Um, it has 128 gigabytes of dedicated CPU memory. And I can then put that to good use. So on this other screen here, my mouse is moving around it, um, there is an inference job that is going to be run in parallel with my fine tuning. So these two pieces of memory, the 96 gigabytes for the um, GPU and the 128 for the CPU, they are not shared, they are dedicated. So as I kick this job here, uh, I will not see, let's say if I, okay, yeah. It will take a few seconds again the, for the model to load, but we sh have already started to see the CPUs or the cores of the CPU uh, during work, their work. What we will not see is any drop in performance of my training job, because again, the, um, uh, the, the memory is separated. So, so there you have it, um, fine tuning of a real model, 5.4 mini, three and a half billion parameters on a real data set, that's the alpaca clean, um, cleaned, happening simultaneously with uh, inference on device locally uh, in, a, in a single machine. And that's the kind of thing we can do. That's, that's amazing, uh, Paulo. So that's the Dell Pro Max Tower T2? That is correct, the and Dell Pro Max Tower T2. So now you can complete this job in two hours, I believe. Um, it's 40 minutes per epoch. So if I run it for three epochs, which is what I like for this uh, data set and this model, yes, two hours. And previously you would run it on a server grade, uh, like server, and how much time would it take? Yeah, that's, that's a great question because it depends. Um, to run the job, I mean, if you have a thousand GPUs on the cloud, it's very fast. But I would spend from one hour to half a day on, on the queue to run the job. And now I can, you know, iterate very quickly here before I know that everything is lined up and just redo this training with a much larger data set on the cloud without error. Great. So you can see developer productivity in action. That's Paulo. He's a researcher. He does fine tuning every day. I'm a product manager. I go around and I have to test things on the go. And so I can't carry that beast around with me, but I can carry this laptop. And what this does, which is the HP uh, ZBook Ultra G1A, it also comes with a 128 GB unified RAM of which 96 GB can be uh, dedicated to, to uh, GPU. Um, so let's say I had an app example that I wanted to test and I want to run image generation and text generation side by side. Can this machine take it? Um, so let's um, switch to device one. Okay. Um, right now I have in front of me Visual Studio Open and this extension AI toolkit that you may have heard about that leverages Windows ML underlying. Um, I have already loaded uh, 5.4 uh, from the model catalog here. And so this model is loading. Uh, meanwhile, I open uh, this app from AMD and they have a GPU optimized model for stable diffusion, uh, which is around 5 GB uh, uh, you know, storage model. I'll load it and let me give it a prompt. I know by now you might have learned about why the sky is blue, so let's try something new. Um, Let's give it a prompt here as well. Can you create a story instead of an image for the same? 
And so while that is getting generated, uh, I'm seeing the model, uh, image generation model has completed at 5.5 iterations per second. So that's two tasks happening at one on the same device. Pretty neat uh, for a laptop that I can carry around with me. Um, and that's great. Uh, but let's say I had a dev who was trying out a 70 billion parameter deep seek R1 model. I wanted to see if I can try that on this device. Um, so I can download the model from Hugging Face uh, uh, and move it to this cache folder here, uh, which can then enable the model to be showcased through the playground capability of AITK. Uh, and this model is no small model. It, it takes about 35 GB storage on device, has 70 billion parameters. So you typically would need a server-grade GPU to run this. Let me load this model. And while that takes a little while, I'll just bring up a, a video showcasing the same so that I save you some time. And let's speed it up. So it's just showing the same steps here. And I can also see what's happening here. It's still loading the model, but the video showing you how that runs real time. OK, so you can see it's pretty quick. Uh, and it leverages the GPU on device. And so on this laptop, you could run a 70 billion parameter model easily with a good enough tokens per second uh, for your testing and uh, you know, other inferencing scenarios. That's pretty neat. Um, so these are just two examples uh, that I showed on this, this laptop. There are more uh, devices from other OEM partners like Lenovo, et cetera. There is a booth at the end of this room. Uh, you should be able to see some of those devices in action. And um, there is also, a, sorry, uh, there's also a blog that went live on Monday. If you want to need more details, you can go to blogs.windows.com and read more about these powerful devices. Um, some of these are still uh, to be released, so you can take an early look there. And if you have any questions, please do reach out. Thank you so much.